Before we start looking at electrical conduction, let's very quickly recap the basics of the cardiac cycle. The cardiac cycle can be broken down into two periods, the resting phase where the heart relaxes and fills with blood and the active phase where the muscle contracts pushing the blood out. During the resting phase blood first flows into the two top chambers of the heart, the left and right atrium. From there it flows down through valves into the larger bottom chambers, the left and right ventricle, allowing them to also fill with blood. With the chambers now full, the active phase of the cycle occurs. First the atrium contract, emptying the contents into the ventricles, increasing the volume of blood within the lower chambers. Now the ventricles contract, the left ventricle pushing the oxygen saturated blood out towards the body's organs, the right side pushing the deoxygenated blood back towards the lungs. The heart then relaxes and the process repeats. The cardiac cycle is controlled and regulated by the heart's electrical conduction system. It is made up of specialist cells that run throughout the heart, transmitting the electrical impulses that trigger the cardiac muscle to contract. The system starts with the sinus node. This collection of specialist cells sits in the right atrium and acts as the heart's natural pacemaker. These cells spontaneously produce electrical impulses at regular intervals, a little like the spark plugs of a car. From the sinus node, the electricity is transmitted along several pathways throughout the atrium, causing the top chambers to contract, pushing blood down into the ventricles below. The impulse is also transmitted through to the atrial ventricular node, which I will refer to from here as the AV node. The AV node is responsible for passing the impulses down from the atrium into the ventricles. It also, crucially, slightly delays the transferring of the impulse from the top to bottom chambers. It is this slight delay that ensures the atrium have enough time to push all their blood down into the ventricles before they too contract, pushing the blood out of the heart and into the body. Without the AV node, the atrium and ventricles would contract nearly simultaneously, resulting in less blood in the ventricles on contraction, reducing cardiac output. The AV node conducts the electricity down to another part of the heart's conduction system known as the bundle of Hiss, which sits between the two ventricular chambers. The bundle of Hiss quickly splits into the left and right bundles. The left bundle spreading down the wall of the left ventricle and the right bundle spreading down into the right. Coming from both bundle branches are fibres projecting into the cardiac muscle that cause the muscle to contract when activated. The net result is that both ventricles contract simultaneously. With the electricity used up, the heart muscle relaxes, ready to repeat the process again. While we may not be able to directly observe the heart beating within our chests, with the help of electrodes it is relatively simple to observe the electrical conduction that controls the cardiac muscle. In medicine, electrodes are used to detect the flow of electricity through the body. Two electrodes placed next to one another will produce a lead an imaginary line between the two electrodes. Using a monitor, we can observe the flow of electricity along the lead. To keep things simple for this video, we are going to refer to a relatively simple free lead ECG. Free leads are positioned on the patient's chest, usually labelled red, yellow and green, thus giving us free leads or views of the heart, each of which can be displayed on a monitor. For this video, we will use lead 2, looking straight up diagonally through the heart along the bundle of Hiss, AV node and sinus node. When learning to interpret ECGs, it can help to visualise an eye sitting behind one of the electrodes, looking back along the lead towards the other electrode. In this case, our eye is sitting under the green electrode, looking up and along lead 2 towards the red electrode. The eye is capable of seeing just two things, if an electrical impulse is moving towards it or away from it. It can then display this information on a monitor or on ECG paper. There are two axes on an ECG. Along the horizontal axis is recorded time. 
along the vertical axis is recorded the flow of electricity. If the electrical impulse moves towards the eye, then this, then this will be recorded as an upward inflection on the ECG. If the electrical impulse is moving away from the eye, then this will be recorded as a downward inflection. Understanding this relatively simple concept is crucial when trying to understand the mechanics of how an ECG works. The electrical impulse begins at the sinus node, from where it flows through the atrium and down towards the AV node. The flow of electricity is predominantly moving along our lead towards our imaginary eye. We therefore get an upward inflection on our ECG. We call this upward inflection the P wave. It represents the contraction of the atrium. The AV node will then briefly pause the flow of electricity to give the atrium time to push its blood down into the ventricles. As the electricity is flowing neither towards or away from the eye, we will get neither an upward or downward inflection on our ECG. Instead, we will get a straight horizontal line as time passes. We will label this the PR interval. It represents how long a pause the AV node causes in the conduction of the electricity. The AV node now passes the electrical impulse down into the ventricles. Because the left ventricle is slightly bigger than the right, to start with there is a slight flow of electricity from left to right. Therefore, the electrical impulse travels briefly away from the eye, leading to a small downward inflection on our ECG, which we will label Q. It then carries on down the left and right branches, moving rapidly towards the eye. This will give us an upward inflection on our ECG, which we will label R. Finally, the left and right bundles will carry the electrical impulse around the left and right walls of the ventricle, taking the electrical impulse away from the eye. This will give us another downward inflection, which we will label S. Together, the Q, R and S represent the contraction of the ventricles. They are collectively referred to as the QRS complex. There is one final bump at the end of the ECG complex known as the T wave. This can be thought of as the cardiac cells that have been involved in, in transmitting the electrical impulse, resetting themselves, ready to transmit again. The more technical name for this is repolarization. And that's our ECG complex. Finally, let's see if you have any pre-existing ECG knowledge. Have a look at this ECG complex. Does anything look unusual about it? If you think you know what it is that's a bit strange, then leave an answer in the comment section below. In the next video, we will look at a simple step-by-step -step method for analysing and interpreting an ECG. We will then apply this step-by-step -step approach to a normal sinus rhythm. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. If you're feeling really enthusiastic, leave me a message in the comment section below.